welcome everybody to my talk. So today I'm going to talk about MapArray and what MapArray is aiming for. So we are going to to fix the miss, missing wheel of the planet. Right? So what's, what's MapArray? So MapArray is a, a platform that aims to do cloud source street view using smartphone and computer vision techniques. So the idea is that uh, we create a convenient ways to capture images using smartphones. So you can try to capture images while you are walking, also when you are biking, but just be careful so, so that you look at the road and don't crash the bike. And, and also when you are uh, driving your car. So you can uh, put the rig on, on the car and stitch your uh, your smartphone on the rig so that it, our app will take pictures every two seconds. And then and also you can take panorama images. And what you need to do after all this is that you press one button on the app and all the images will be automatically uploaded to our server, being processed, and then show it in, the, in our web uh, viewer so you can view the images later on. I'm gonna show you how the images looks like afterwards. So, for example, if you go to our website and then you search for Venice Beach, which is in Los Angeles. So, we have two dedicated mappers, which are two of our co-founders. They, they went there for vacation because one of our co-founders lives in LA. So, it took them more or less two hours to map these areas, which is specified by the blue lines on the map. So if you click onto one of the blue line, you will see the images uh, that they have taken along those lines. And then you can also see the uh, navigation bars, which is a little bit similar to what Google has nowadays. So you can actually navigate through the sequences. So to see this in action, so you can actually scrub through the sequences like this. So you can, you're moving forward. And you can also turn around based on your, uh, the direction the phone is pointing towards. So, so currently our, our users are amazing and they're super engaged. So this is one of the example that one of our regular user, he went out in the neighborhood he lived in and then he tried to map every other day or something like that. So after two weeks, and then the, almost the whole area is map, which is covered by the blue line specified here, you can see. So one of the good things about MapArray is that all the images that are taken under the MapArray app, so upload this, if you agree to upload through that MapArray license, they're free available from the, by the CC by SA license. So it means that all the versions all the photo versions that are available on our, our website, you, or through our API, they are under the same license. And you can see more of the detail, uh, detail information about the license on our, our legal page there. So besides CC by SA license, uh, for OpenStreetMap, we have special rights as well. So you can actually try to derive data from the images. For example, you can derive the, the stream number, the stream name, and also you, maybe you can want to see whether the row is in repair or something like that. For example, this is what's going on here in uh, Castroop. So all this uh, metadata you can derive freely from metadata uh, for, from photos if you are using it for OpenStreetMap. And what's more, you can also use the GPS tracks freely as well. Uh, from the photos. So I'm going to explain a little bit uh, what's going on behind the scene with uh, our platform. So it's divided into three steps. The first one is capture, and the second one is process, uh, data processing, and the third one is to present the data on our viewer. So if you look at the first part, so nowadays we have uh, uh, different version of the app available on Windows, Android, and Apple, uh, app, uh, iOS devices. And 
You can also upload the pictures through our, our menu uh, web uploader. I will explain that a little bit more uh, in the following slides. So after you take the pictures, you can uh, upload the pictures through our API, and then we'll process the, process the images for you. So what we do there, which I will also explain a bit later, is one of them is uh, to protect privacy, privacy. So we detect uh, faces and license plate, and then we blur those inf uh, uh, patches on the images. And we also extract some uh, metadata from the images as well. So after this, we are going to present the, the images onto the, the web viewer we had on the website. So in, what is in our plan is that we are going to extend the, the apps to different other mobile platforms like uh, Kindle and Jora. So actually now it's already available on Kindle. So this is kind of an old slide. And we also want to allow users to upload pictures taken from uh, GoPro as well. And also we want to extend the processing uh, pipeline so that we, we, if you have uh, your own processing pipeline, you can integrate that into the system. And viewer-wise, we will allow users to use the data for their own GIS system or their own native viewer. Yeah, so the other thing I want to talk about is to give an example on uh, how to make the capturing uh, process as efficient as possible. So one of the, one of the example is that what we have tried is that in uh, Malmo in Sweden, that we went onto a bus and then we put the phone near the window of the bus and then we stay with the bus for half an hour and that will take 1,000 images around, uh, within approximately 30 minutes. And then you can see the, the, the sequence of the image on the right. So it's, uh, it's going around the city. So the other way is that you can mount your phone onto your bike as well. So you can use any of the action cameras like GoPro camera or the new uh, Garmin Verb camera. And then we, you can use the writing mode, which will take pictures every two seconds. And then you can, then you can use our uh, menu uploader to upload all the pictures afterwards. That's, even though you are not using our apps, you, st you can still up, uh, contribute the pictures into Mapperary in that way. So I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit what is the menu uploader besides the apps. So, Basically, any camera or any uh, other devices that can take pictures along with uh, geotech uh, information can be uploaded to Mapillary. So the good thing about this, using our menu uploader, is that you can actually, for example, you are taking the pictures with your phone, but you don't have Wi-Fi uh, to upload the images uh, at the moment, but your phone is running out of uh, storage then you can actually move your photos from the phone to your computer to release the, the storage, and then you can upload later on. Or you can uh, filter bad images on your computer, which is much easier than you will have done on a, on a mobile phone. So, we, for example, we have done it for the bus sequences that we have captured, because there are so many, and some of the pictures are towards the sun, and then it's overexposed. So we have to do some filtering, uh, easy filtering on that way. And then you can also upload other geotech images, as I said, from other action cameras like GoPro or Gamut Burp, for example. So there are two options that you can use. One is use a web uploader. So it's quite easy to use. You just choose the images that you want to uh, upload. So currently, the necessary information for the images allow you that the minimum information that's needed to upload to uh, Mapillary is the GPS uh, positions, uh, the compass direction of the image, and also the orientation of the images so that we know that whether it's upside down or turning 90 degree or something like that. So uh, also the capture date so that we can keep track of the, the day when you capture the images. That can be a good uh, metadata to have. So otherwise, you can also use a Python script to upload all the images, which is also super easy to use. 
So it's available on GitHub. So if you try to Google Mapper in GitHub, you will see the, the script available there. And then I will talk about a little bit uh, in details what we have done uh, with the image processing. So one thing we have done is that we try to match images. So the reason of doing this, one is that to enrich the navigation uh, effects, as I will show you later on. So we actually match the, the local feature points. As you can see, they are, so these are two uh, images taken from different angles. We extract uh, small fe uh, point features on different images, then we try to match them uh, based on also geometric relationship between the two images using computer vision. And the other thing we do is that we try to detect and blur faces. The same thing we have done for uh, license plates on a car. So one thing we are working on is that we will try to stitch the, the images so that we will enrich the, uh, the browser experience. So we stitch the images so you can get a 360 degree experience if you are taking the pictures in that way. And then we also straighten the images. So if you are taking pictures with a GoPro, there will be distortion. So as you can see from the image on the left, the straight line is not straight because it's a wide angle camera. So using image analysis, we can actually calibrate the, Im uh, the image, find out the distortion parameter, then we straighten the images automatically uh, based on the metadata saved in the image. So I talked about how we were using the match information. As I can, you can see that the photos are matched to each other, and they, they are transformed based on their geometric uh, relation. So with this, we can actually enable this kind of navigation effect. So one image is stitched onto it, the other image. And then you can navigate like this kind of synthetic 3D effects so that you can get a better uh, feeling of the environment. So it's not uh, fully 3D, but um, it's an add-on so that by doing this kind of match, you will actually gain this kind of uh, effects by doing the transformation. So the next thing I've talked about is the editor, which is necessary with since the data we collected is not perfect. So we we allow the user to go in and edit the data, much like what OSM is, uh, is doing nowadays. So basically, any registered user can edit uh, the GPS tracks. So as you can see, there is a track taken by user on the top. And you, you can clearly see the GPS are off. So what you can do is to use our editor. So you can just move around the, the markers to put them onto the correct position like onto the, the correct path of the street. So the other thing, so as you know, as I said that we, we have done blurring, but the blurring is a kind of, it's not a perfect uh, detector that, that we are having now. So we were confused because sometimes the window of a building looks like a license plate sometimes. Um, so what we do is that we add we give the freedom to a user to correct this kind of mistake made by the machine. So as you can see, you can actually go into a picture. And yes, so this is the blur edit mode. So you can try to edit the blur in this way. Okay, so you, you will see that there is a, a rectangle that's detected by the machine, which is wrong. You can remove it if you want. And also, the machine missed a small license plate on the car. You can edit the rectangle afterwards. And you can send a request. And then we, we will look at the, the request and approve or reject the, the change set. So we, we also allow the users to, uh, to integrate our, our viewer onto their website as well. So just to make this super easy to integrate onto any uh, uh, site. So here's one of the example. So here's the, 
we, if you remember, we we fall, uh, we go on the bus, we run on the bus, and then we take sequences of images on different bus routes in, uh, in Sweden. So you can see that this is one of the bus routes. So you, you can go and navigate. And this is a widget, so you can actually put it onto your website. So it's independent of our, our home page. So you can do all the things that is available on our website. Yeah. So coverage-wise, so we just passed one million photos last week. So now we have uh, one million and forty-seven thousand-ish photos. And I don't know how to read this meters. And it's um, twenty-six million meters that we have map. Uh, the users of Mapper we have map. Uh, yeah, as we are in Germany, so another data point is that Germany actually have the most coverage now uh, nowadays in MapPerry. So if you remember, we have around one million photos, and and um, we have yeah three hundred and seventy one thousand of them are from Germany. So you should go out and try our apps. So it's available in many. Uh, Platforms, as I said, so uh, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and Amazon Store. So you're very welcome to report issues. So we will try to respond to the, your request as soon as possible, as we are a small team only with four people. So, but issues are always welcome. And you can also try our API. So you can try to fetch the images and try to derive metadata for OpenStreetMap, for example. And then you can also try our integration of widgets from the, if you look at, there are some examples that you can look at. And also one of our user has also developed uh, a script so that you can actually export the GPS tracks from Mapery to Zosum, I think, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Lots of questions, actually. Okay. Uh, what is possible to do with your API? So, so now you can fetch uh, different version of the pictures from. Uh, you can also do query like a bounding box. You can fetch the images within the bounding box, and things like that. And how to earn money? Is it? Yes, so one of our business model is that uh, for, it's like GitHub. So if you want to create a private project and keep the images private, so you have to, yeah, then you can, yeah, basically you pay a private account fee for that. That's one of our business models. Just very briefly, you, the, the Creative Commons license that applies to the images for reuse, and it's an attribution license. So are they attributing the original contributor, or are they attributing you? Uh, I think it's a uh, map priority. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there a point uh, in uploading photos taken in mapping party, uh, photos from signs, plates, and uh, mm -hmm. Not of the street, but of uh, basically signs at shops and street names. Uh, what What do you mean? I don't quite get the question. Well, sorry. Uh, as I say, seen, uh, mapillary is mostly used for panoramas from center of the street. But okay. when I'm uh, mapping, uh, collecting data for a map, I make photos of uh, signs of uh, shop names, uh, yeah. opening hours, and so yeah. close-ups. Is there a point of uploading such photos to my pillory? So, you, what's your question? I, the question. Sh should I upload close-ups of uh, plates and signs to my pillory? Cl yeah. Close-up photos. 
Yes, uh, yes, that's a much needed feature. We're going to add that. So you can actually enlarge the images so that you can read the information uh, more clearly, yes. So I have my own question, but I also want to, I want you to understand his question, which yeah. is that when we mappers go out and collect data, yeah. we don't take pictures of the street, you know, like you would in a car. We take pictures of close-ups of signs to get the names. Yes. We take pictures of the opening hours or the menus or things like that that we're going to use to reference later. So that was his question. My question is, so I want you to answer that, but I want to yeah. answer must, my own question is, if I upload to Mapillary using your app, can I then download my pictures back in, in mass? Or do I have to, or are they sort of now part of the Mapillary cloud and Yes. That's a tricky one. That uh, about this legal thing. Um, I think as the user you, so if you read our legal terms, maybe you get more information about that. I've been using Mapillary uh, yeah. the past weeks, and um, the upload process is very slow. Is, yeah. uh, is it something you're going to improve quickly? Yes, we are improving on that. The, the slowing part is that since if, if you have remembered that we have doing this image matching, and that is the current bottleneck. We have some techniques to speed that up. So whenever you saw one image is saying that image in processing, that's because the matching have. I uh, I imagine the processing takes time. Yeah. But the the upload from my uh, application, it's very long. You mean the changes that you submitted? Uploading my pictures. Oh. Send the picture to okay. my computer. Could it be the Wi-Fi or? No, no, it's, I, I'm on a fast network. Okay. So, so actually we prioritize the upload, so it should be quite fast, but maybe there is some time that our server is, uh, is upgrading, then it takes some more time, because then the server is kind of uh, uh, down, so we have to fix that sometimes. That could be the reason. But uh, it's good to know that you have this problem. Then we will have that in mind. If you have ever experienced that again, just contact us and submit an issue there so that we can look into that. OK, I think two more questions, maybe. You said something about uh, you need the compass direction. Yes. Um, I've got a tablet without an integrated compass, yeah. um, and I've got an, a smartphone with compass, but it doesn't really give the direction, mm -hmm. uh, only uh, um, an estimate, so to say. Yeah. Further, a magnetic direction might differ significantly from true direction. So, what, 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 well, well can I use, um, the uh, the tablet without compass, or uh, how do you handle yeah. it? Yes, so one of the possibility is that you preset all the compass direction to zero, for example, then you edit the compass direction after you upload the picture. That would take quite a lot of manual work, I suppose, but we have a function that if you are taking straightforward uh, images so that you are moving forward, we can actually uh, correct the whole sequence together automatically so that you can say that how much degree it is off against the direction you are moving, something like that. So if you are moving forward, then it follows the direction you, you are moving. So you can do this editing by just like one edit instead of edit all the uh, individual images. Okay, one very last quick question. Is it quick? Um, are you aware of the Open Street View project, yes. which was set up a few years ago yes. with similar principles? Uh, yes, I'm aware of, of Open Street View. Yes, and uh, would it be possible to to post, uh, work with them for to import the images that they already have, possibly? Yes, uh, actually, um, not improving. Maybe importing some of the images or. Or we, if it's allowed by the original creator of OpenStream View, 
we, we can have some collaboration so that we can transport the data to MapQuery. And then, yeah, having more images is always helpful. So you can extract more metadata and combine the MapQuery images with the OpenStreet View images, for example. That can be an option, but uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay, that's all now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.